All right, here we go. Part seven. Part seven. I'm taking a break from my vocal rest to do this, which I shouldn't do. I know I open every one of these videos by saying I shouldn't be talking, but I really shouldn't be talking. I'm having vocal problems, but I enjoy doing this. So I'm um, opening the window for uh, however long it takes to talk about row seven. Then I'm going to shut up again. Um, as always, thank you for listening. I won't be able to respond to any comments as they come up just because I cannot... I cannot multitask that way. I'll get distracted. Last time, I went on so long, my phone overheated. Um, so we'll see what happens. I don't know how this is going to go. So we're going to pick up on um, row number seven, and we're going to go from there. And I'm just going to ramble. Again, I don't know what's coming up, and I'll just react as, as I go. Uh, that's all. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> row seven. Oh, we end with, okay. Okay, well, we ended last time with Phil Collins. So we're going to pick up with Phil Collins here. Um, here you go. This is actually, if, if you're a Phil Collins fan, this is maybe my favorite Phil Collins record. Maybe. It's very, very good. It's from 2002, I think. And it's very solid. I did not really like both sides at all, which I have a review on YouTube. I didn't really like both sides. Dance Into the Light was kind of hit and miss for me. This was really good. Um... I'm sure you can get it for almost pennies on Amazon, but uh, Testify by Phil Collins, his last studio record. Some great stuff on here, truly uh, good stuff. Uh, all right, moving on, Phineas and Ferb soundtrack. Listen, if anybody has never heard of Phineas and Ferb, I'm telling you, thank you, Bill Romer, for turning me on to Phineas and Ferb. I love this show. It's ultra, ultra clever. Great show. I could talk forever about Phineas and Ferb, but I won't. And the music is actually really good, so I got the soundtrack. All right, moving on. Phoenix Down, Under a Wild Sky. This is Kane Roberts' record uh, from, I forgot what year, 1999. Oh, my God. Michael Wagner? I didn't know he was involved. Uh, I've had this for a while. It's kind of rare, I think. Yes? No? I don't know. I haven't listened to it yet. Sorry. Um, moving on. This is going to take forever, isn't it? Get in there. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Come on. We got stuff to do. Planet X Universe. That's Tony. I say McElpine. Tony McElpine. Uh, it's, I haven't listened to this either. I assume it's just crazy progressive rock instrumental stuff. Is that right? I don't know. I probably should know more about that. Poco Legacy. I got this record because it's got one of my favorite songs of all time. Call it love. Love that song. Such a great little radio song. Got all night. Let's take our time. Such a beautiful. I love that song. It's such a great pop radio song. I haven't listened to any of the rest of this yet. Uh, although I think Nothing to Hide is a Richard Marx cover. Is that right? Oh, yeah, probably. Look at that. David Call Richard Marx. Uh, Poison. Here's my Poison collection. There's nothing I can say about Poison, you know, really. Um, this is my favorite because it's the most polished. And I own this, but haven't listened to it yet. Um, Richie Conson's on here, and I have mixed feelings about Richie Conson. Um, I don't deny his talent. I just, it's hit and miss for me. It's too, a little too bluesy. Uh, oh, I was going to the police. We're going to move on to the police. There's nothing I can say about the police you don't know. Except for, why am I missing one? Wait a minute. Why am I missing one of my police records? Oh, when I hang up this up, I'm going to have to go on a search. Where's... They have five records. I know they do. Okay, that's pissed. That's, 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 that's concerning me. Well, um, which one am I missing? There's the third one, right? All right, well, whatever. There's my police records. Uh, Pretty Maids. I've heard about Pretty Maids uh, for, for years. And I bought this collection because I'm completely ignorant when it comes to Pretty Maids. And to this day, I have not listened to any Pretty Maids stuff still. Which one of these should I listen to first? Anybody even know who this is? I'm really still bummed about my police record. I'm missing something. Oh. All right. Oh, Prince. Here's my Prince collection. It's very small. I, uh, you know, one day I'll get to adding to this even more. But my Prince collection is pretty, it's pretty minor considering the breadth of material he has. Um... I have this one. That was terrible. Uh, Musicology is really the only one I've actually listened to and digested fully. I really have this stuff and haven't really listened to much of it. Uh, but I do like this. My, there's a great song, Call My Name, on here. I love that song. I would tell you to go go find it on YouTube, but you can't because all his stuff is kept under rats pretty well. Uh, that's my print stuff. Private Life. I saw this band open up for Van Halen on the OU812 tour, I think. and uh, Which makes sense now because this was produced by Eddie Van Halen. Uh, but they did a great song called Rockabye Angel, which I really liked, um, to where I drew I drew a little, I drew that in my notebook in high school. I just thought it was a great song. Uh, female Fronted Rock, um, Ghost in the Machine. Thank you, Steve Journey. I don't know where it went. I know I had it. 
it might be here somewhere, but it sh it should be. I'm really irritated by that. I this is my collection, and when stuff goes missing, it drives me crazy. Uh, Private Life, so pretty decent stuff. Uh, they have two records. I don't know if they had three. I think they just had these two. This is the one with uh oh no, it's not. No, oh, whatever. Anyway. Uh, I'm just rambling about a band nobody knows anything about anyway, right? No one knows who Private Life is, right? Uh, music from the motion, uh, music from Quantum Leap. There's a great song. I love Scott Bakula, by the way. Actually, he's from my hometown, St. Louis. Great, beautiful song in here called uh, Somewhere in the Night. Really beautiful, actually. Great piano stuff. I mean, it's dated production, but it's a good song. Uh, here's my Queensryche correction, co collection. Uh, I don't have as much of it as I should, but uh, here you go. There's Queensryche. There's this one. Uh, I am a victim of, I was 16 when this came out, so I listened to this one to death, so this is of course my favorite Queen Sock record, just because it's polished and very nice, but there are times when this of course could be my favorite, because I do love this, um, everyone loves this, any Queen Sock fan knows what this is, and then they got a little bit spotty, oh not there, oh that's my uh, remastered one, I got a remastered version of this one, because I love it so much, uh, and then they got kind of spotty, but I kept buying them, uh, I haven't listened to most of these that was pretty good, actually. Uh, Mind Crime 2, I was not disappointed, and I had low expectations. I thought uh, I thought it was going to be terrible, but actually it was really good. Uh, I haven't listened to that yet, and so ends my Queensryche. Quiet Riots, this I had on tape, and I listened to it over and over. The song Thunderbird. Oh, man, I listened to Thunderbird so many times. I loved it. Um, but I like this. Slick Back Black Cadillac is cool. Run for Cover is cool. But here's my Quiet Riot collection. Hard to say that. Quiet Riot collection. Quiet Riot, there's more, just, there's Quiet Riot, there's Quiet Riot, more, do I have more? No, that's it, okay, moving on, uh, the Radio Sun, I've heard really good things about these guys, I've seen them live, I bought this record, and I still haven't listened to it, um, sorry, I'll get to it someday, there's just too much to listen to, <sighs> Rainbow, um, I got this because uh, Since You Been Gone is on here, which I love, and I haven't listened to this yet either. I've only heard Since You Been Gone. I know, I know, I'm a terrible rock fan, I know. Uh, same thing with this one. I bought this record for Stone Cold because I love Stone Cold, and I haven't listened to any of the rest, anything else on here. Sorry, I'm terrible. Uh, how do you say this? Ramos, Ramos, Ramos? This is Josh Ramos' record, uh, the guitar player from The Storm, and you know I love The Storm. Anything associated with the storm, I am there. Uh, this was pretty good. It was very melodic and noty, a little bit fluffy at parts, but not not bad. Uh, I forgot who the singer was. I thought it was interesting that Kelly Hansen produced it, but didn't sing on it. But uh, not bad. Like poor man's the storm, you know. Almost. I mean, to be honest, everything, and I mean no disrespect, because you can't top the storm. But everything that the people in the storm have done since the storm is poor man's the storm, basically. Basically, I don't mean that with any. That sounded terrible. I'm gonna move on. Uh, so there's that record. Anybody got that? Uh, I went and saw Randy Newman about a year and a half ago just to be in the same room with this guy because the guy's a freaking genius and has written a zillion songs. And uh, it was really interesting. He was really great to see live. He just sat there at a piano and told stories and played songs. And when I got home, I bought this. I haven't listened to any of it, but I got a Randy Newman collection that I'll get to someday. Um, why are they so hard today? Rascal Flats. So here's the Ras Rascal Flats. I dig. I got into Rascal Flats because of this record, and this is a great record. It really is very solid. I know everyone thinks it's. I'm telling you, it's kind of country, but it's kind of not. My rock friends should really dig this. It's very lush production, all done by Dan Hoff. Great songwriters. The guy can really actually sing. It's it's country, but not overly country. And the production is just so full and and really good. There's some great stuff on here. So that got me into Rascal Flats. And I went and then backpedaled and got all their stuff. So I think I have, I'm pretty sure I have every Rascal Flats record. They have terrible names on their records. Feels Like Today, uh, Unstoppable, Nothing Like This. Just not, They don't have good record titles. Change, that was pretty good. Actually, that was really good. I got a YouTube uh, record review of that on my channel also. I reviewed that one. I haven't listened to this one yet. Uh, okay, then we're on to Rat. Here's my Rat collection. Anybody remember Rat? Uh, I don't have a lot to say about Rat because I'm going to be honest, I haven't fully digested this album. Uh, I think I did this one. Yeah, I listened to that one a couple years ago. Um, mostly I got this one because Desmond Child was on board, right? I think he was. He co-wrote all these songs. Um, by the way, Stephen Piercy, the lead singer for Rat, uh, sounds a lot like uh, Steve Smith from American Dad to me whenever he goes, like that kind of stuff. So, 
Uh, I only got those three rat records, and I do have the other ones in my wish list on Amazon, but I haven't gotten there yet. Moving on, Ray Charles. Can't say much about Ray Charles other than I should have all of his records, and I only have a, a embarrassing few. My World. I bought this record when I was in high school because a song for you was on the radio when I was in high school, and I love that song. So beautiful. I had no idea it was a cover. I had no idea. It's just so amazing, the, the Ray Charles version of Song for You. Love that. And then I got a couple more, but I haven't really listened to them. Why are these blurry? Sorry. Am I too close? Am I too far away? I don't know. All right, that's all the Ray Charles I have. I should have more, but I don't. Uh, Red Rider, Tom Cochran's band from Canada from the earth. Remember uh, Lunatic Fringe? Uh, that's the only. I haven't listened to this. I bought this at least 15, 20 years ago, and I still haven't listened to it. Sorry. Uh, same thing with, with Reliant K. I don't remember why I bought this, and I don't, and I haven't listened to it yet. Um, I don't know why I have it. I have this, and I have this, and I've never listened to them. I don't know if I like them. So they're just sitting here waiting to be heard. Restless Heart I bought because of uh, they had two songs on the radio when I was in college or high school, When She Cries and um, Tell Me What You Dream. They were nice soft rock songs, and I was still am a big soft rock fan, but I used to get a lot of this stuff at that time, so I got this. Um, so there's my Restless Heart record. Uh, Revolution Saints. Uh, this was the Jack Blades, Doug Aldrich, Dean Castanovo uh, record that I was incredible. I mean, I was so, so excited to get this. I love anything Jack Blades does. I've been waiting 15 years or 10 years probably for Dean. I've been waiting for Dean Casanova to front a van ever since he did that song, uh, Never Too Late on the Generations record by Journey. I'm like, God, this guy's got a great voice. Jesus, why doesn't he make record? I was so excited for this record. Oh my God, I've rarely been more disappointed in anything. I think I was more disappointed with Chickenfoot and, and, uh, Van Halen 3. Other than that, this is probably the most disappointing. I didn't like any. It was just the same song 12 times. Nothing stuck with me. I listened to this for two solid weeks and it was just none of these songs did anything for me. I'm very sorry. I know everybody loved this record. I'm so sorry, but I didn't like it. Richie Sambora, the, um, um, you should know this, the uh, guitar player and co-songwriter for Bon Jovi. Guy to stuff. Really good voice. I wish he would have done more solo records, actually. So there's that. And this one, oh wait, is that it? No, we had another one. Ah, the aftermath of the lowdown. I guess I haven't gotten that yet. Okay, well, I have those two. Rick Emmett, the lead singer for uh, uh, Triumph. Uh, I don't think I've listened to this, actually. I don't know how long I've had it. Ring of Fire. Um, uh, oh, God, what's his name? Ah, I can't think of his name. I'm going to have to cheat. Um, oh, God. Forgive me. I can't think of his name. I know T Tony McAlpine's on here. Um, well, anyway, here, this is kind of a neoclassical hard rock kind of stuff. They actually have a few records. I didn't know that. Um, but I only have this one. The thing I love about this album is that, um, it's, there's a credit on here. Mark Bowles was genius, actually. I've never seen this before on anything, but his songwriting credits say lyrics and melodies by Mark Bowles and music by someone else. So, that means, you know, someone gave him the chords and Mark came up with the words and the melodies and all the hooks. And I've oftentimes wanted to steal that idea because I've written songs where I was given all the music, but I came up with all the words and all the hooks and all the melodies and I'm credited with lyrics. And I'm kind of like, well, I wrote music. What I did was musical. So this record is the only one I've ever seen where they actually credit him with melodies as well because that is important. It is musical. But at the same time, it's not chords. So... Whatever. All right, I can't get that back in, and you guys wanted to sit, you know, I'll figure that out later when I try to find my missing police record. Uh, Robbie Robertson, he wrote Broken Arrow that uh, um, Rod Stewart covered that I really love, so I got this record. Have, oh, there it is, Broken Arrow. Haven't listened to this yet, so there you go. Robert Downey Jr.'s got a record. You guys know that? From like 2004, I think. Yeah, 2004. Uh, I bought this as a novelty, and I still haven't listened to it, so there you go. This was a gift. I haven't listened to it yet, but apparently it's something that I'm supposed to love. Robert Randolph and the Family Family Band. I like this. There's some good songs on here. Uh, Diane's a good tune. Um, what's the other one? Oh, Sexy 79. That's not on here. Okay, well, I'll move on then. Robin Beck. Uh, I actually, I'm sorry to say this, I just bought this about a month ago and I haven't listened to it yet, but I'll probably love it because it got Desmond Child and Diane Warren all over it. I'm already familiar with half these songs from all the other stuff I've done, but, uh, there's that. I don't know what else to say about that. There's my Rod Stewart collection. Rod Stewart, man, 
I know he's a punchline, but he's very, very talented. He's written a mountain of material. He has a unique voice, a great range. He's been doing what he's doing forever. He actually still makes good records. I love his stuff. I love, I really do. From this, this stuff, the earlier stuff is kind of hit and miss for me. But from this one on, there's some really beautiful stuff on this record. There's great stuff on this one. There's great, well, that's a collection. There's great stuff on, uh, on this one. This is beautiful. There's some really good stuff on this one. I like this one. This one came out last year, and there's some great, great stuff on here. There's a song called uh, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man. It's really beautiful for his kids. It's really sweet. I mean, he keeps making good quality records. I know he, he's a punchline, and he shouldn't be, because the guy is an institution, right? Oh, well. All right, that's my Rod Stewart collection. Someday I'll get more of the older stuff, but I really do prefer the newer polished stuff. It's really good. Uh, the Romantics, I got the Romantics Greatest Hits, just because I like the song. Um, um, uh, what's, oh, what is it? You're talking in your sleep? Good song. I haven't listened to the rest of this either. I bought it from Columbia House when I was a kid. Uh, Romeo's Daughter. This was a uh, Mutt Lang helmed project in like 1988, I think. 1988, yeah. He uh, co-wrote most of this, and you can. it's just very thick. With Mutt Lang production, all those background vocals and the big snare drum. It's it's very Mutt Lang. Um, so it's like a it's like a poor man's female fronted Def Leppard kinda. I mean, it's not quite that good, but nothing is as good as Def Leppard for me. But I mean, if you don't have this and you love the Mutt Lang stuff, it is it is good. Uh, I have the follow up, the uh, Rock Candy remaster that I still haven't listened to. So sorry about that. Roxy Blue. Oh my God, I love this album. This is my favorite band that only ever made one record. I know they came up with one some more a couple of years ago, but that was not a full-on record for me. I'm sorry. This album is so, so good. I love this record. Listen, if you love old-school Van Halen, like Van Halen 1, 2, Women and Children First, um, this is great. These guys are just full-on Van Halen worship. Just one guitar player, one one drummer, you know, of one drummer, of course. Um, it's full on Van Halen. I mean, look at this. It's Van Halen worship. That's what it is. This is a great, great album. So if you're a fan of like the hooky hard rock stuff, I can't say enough about how much I love this record. Every song, every song is killer. Produced by Mike Klink. Great stuff, man. Check it out. Go on YouTube. Listen to something. I love this album. Moving on. The best of the Runaways, because you gotta have something by the Runaways. I bought this, and I don't think I've listened to it yet. There's so many of those. I'm sorry. Uh, here's my Rush collection. There's not much I can say about Rush. I mean, you already have your opinion about Rush. I'm just gonna show you that I have every Rush record. I've actually only listened to them up through Power Windows. I haven't listened to anything past Power Windows yet. Um, but I'll get to it. There's so much stuff, and as much as I do uh, appreciate Rush... It does tend to blend together from album to album, so I gotta put distance. I gotta put time between this record and this record, so I can, so they don't start bleeding into each other. Uh, otherwise, I listen to them all straight through. So I'm, I'm up to Power Windows. I'm li I actually listened to it today while I was skating, uh, and then I have to still get through the rest of these. Rush. I like Show Don't Tell. I know that's on there. Uh, that one. That one. I mean, I'm just showing you Rush records. It's not real exciting, but that's where we are. There you go. Uh, all right. Uh, Sahara, this was a gift from Jerry Ritz. Thank you. I haven't listened to it yet. I'm sorry. Please don't be offended. There's just so much to listen to, and I haven't gotten to it yet. Saigon Kick, I bought this because of Love is on the Way, because I love the harmonies in Love is on the Way, and I've had this record for 20 years. Still haven't listened to it. Sorry. Saints of the Underground, I got this earlier this year because Janie Lane... It's a Jenny Lane record. It's been really out of focus, hasn't it, this whole time? I'm sorry about that. And again, another one that I look forward to hearing, and I still haven't listened to it. I'm terrible. Sam Cooke collection. Same story. I got about all these. I bought it. Still haven't listened to it. Sarah, man, I'm, I'm saying that a lot. Sarah Bareilles. Uh, when Love Song came out, and it wasn't... I saw her do it on something, and before it was everywhere, before it was just... It just before it um, bored me. I loved it. Great voicings on the piano. Good pop song. Great bridge. Great choice of uh, melody. Hitting the twos and the fours once in a while. I mean, really cool stuff. And I haven't listened to the rest of this record yet. I haven't heard any of the rest of this. Sorry. Uh, the Say Anything soundtrack. I got this because I wanted the song All For Love. Nancy Wilson, All For Love. Love that song. 
I actually don't think I've even listened to the rest of this. I bought this just for that one song. And once again, 20 whatever years ago, when you wanted a song, that's the only way to get it. You buy, you paid $15 for one song. Uh, all right. Oh, scandal. All right. Remember when I talked about pa Patty Smythe earlier? Um, on the last one, Patty Smythe, just a wonderfully voiced Patty Smythe, how much I love her. Uh, Scandal. She, she made one EP, which I don't have on disc. I got on tape somewhere with Goodbye to You on it. And this record was Scandal. Everybody knows The Warrior, right? Shooting at the walls of heartache, bang, bang, I am the warrior. Just nothing I can say other than how disappointing it is that this woman only recorded like 37 songs and that's it. Once again, if anybody knows anything that Patti Smythe did other than her two solo records and the two Scandal records, tell me. I love her voice. Uh, all right, the Scorpions. This is just going to be me showing you Scorpion stuff. Scorpions have been around, for, I think, 72 is the first Scorpions record. Yes, yeah, 72. So they've been around 35, 45 years. I don't have all the Scorpion stuff. I'm just going to show you what I have. Most of this I haven't listened to. Uh, I did listen to that. I list, that was good. That was good. My favorite, there's a greatest hits. Crazy World was pretty good. I got a review of that up online somewhere. I think I got a review of this one also. I'm not sure. Uh, but this is actually one of my favorites. I love Face the Heat. It's one of my favorite Scorpions records. Great songs on here. This whole first six songs are really killer. I love this record. Really cool. Um, Pure Instinct was okay. Um... This was great. I actually listened to this only like three or four months ago, and I actually loved it. There's some really good stuff on here. Not as much as I love this. Humanity is a beautiful record. Um, Co-written and produced by Desmond Child, I think. Yeah, Desmond Child. Really, really good stuff on here. Some great stuff. Really, I like Scorpion's last few records. I think their more recent output's been the best because that's really nice, and that was that has some great songs on it. And I love a lot of stuff on this, too. Um I really like their their later stuff because it's more polished and more succinct. The older stuff is all right, but it's more jam bandy, which is great too. But I like the newer stuff. Uh, Seal. I bought this because I like his voice and "Kiss from a Rose" is a beautiful song. And this record is shit. Oh my god, this is a terrible album. Moving on, Sebastian Bach, the lead singer from Skid Row. I bought this uh, I think last year, and I just haven't gotten around to listen to it yet. Sorry. Secrets. I bought this at uh, MR3, and again, haven't gotten around to listen to it. I will. I'm sorry. Shadow King, the lead singer from Foreigner, Lou Graham. This is a one-off band uh, that was done, produced by Keith Olsen. Bought this on the recommendation of Sean Pilata earlier this year. Still haven't listened to it. Sorry. Shadows Fade, the great Kevin Chalfant. That's how I say his name. I think it's wrong. I did not know it existed until Jerry Ritz told me it existed, and I appreciate that very much. I bought it. I've already listened to it, and I'm very sorry to say, I am sorry to say there is a review coming, but I didn't really care for this. It's good to hear Kevin Chalfant singing, but I didn't, I didn't get much out of this, and I tried. Oh, God, I wanted to love it. I did, but I didn't. Sorry. Shania Twain. I could talk forever about Shania Twain, but I won't. Here's the Shania Twain records. Uh, I got into her right here, just like the whole rest of the world did. Uh, I bought this because it's like earlier recordings of hers. I do not have her self-titled album because she didn't write any of the songs on her self-titled record, so I'm not interested in hearing Shania Twain do cover records. So I got that. And this is really... See, in my world, this record... Well, not this record. This one actually came first. This changed. This, is, this to me, was the catalyst for what we now know as Bro Country. Because as far as I know... Mutt Lang produced and co-wrote these. And as far as I know, before these records, country didn't have the elements it has now of the rock kind of stuff. I want to say rock. More polished, like hooky stuff, big harmonies. And uh, it got me into what I thought was country at the time. And I think that this record opened the door for Faith Hill to make the records. Because she didn't make records like this until this came Like Faith Hill made straight up country records until this came out. And then Faith Hill started making commercial polished records. And this... Just turned into Rascal Flats is is of of this record. All the country stuff that started to be more accessible to people like me is because of this. Because Mutt Lang was a fan of her face, because who isn't? And they started writing songs together, and they made this record. It changed everything, and then this changed everything because it appealed to everybody. Because this is a beautiful record, so hooky and catchy, and so immaculately produced. And of course, she's gorgeous. And she actually can sing. Her autobiography, by the way, her autobiography.
autobiography is heartbreaking and very interesting. And she earned everything she made. I mean, it was, it, it's really interesting. Her autobiography is really interesting. Um, but these records, I mean, if you're younger than me and don't know this album, I would think everybody would love this. There's such great hooks all over this and beautiful arrangements and just great. Um, she's uh, about to be honored as like CMT's uh, Lifetime Achievement or something like that. Like the first female to ever have Lifetime Achievement, which I think Dolly Parton should be first. I mean, come on. Dolly, sorry, I love Shania Twain, but Shania Twain really only made these three records. I mean, this is a demo collection. She made a record before that she didn't write anything. So she really only co-wrote and made these three records. And this one, although very good, most people didn't buy it. Does anybody know one song off of here? Probably not. So everything you know about Shania Twain is these two albums, and they're wonderful. These are great, great, great records. I love these records. I wish I could write and produce songs like this. I love, love this. Uh, yeah, yeah, Steve, I did miss, I don't want the country one. I chose not to buy the country one because she's doing cover songs, and I just want, I want the stuff she writes. The stuff she covers doesn't interest me. Um, great stuff. All right, moving on. Um, Shannon Knoll, I have this record because he covers a Brian Adams song called, um, uh, The Way, The Way That I Feel. I think that's what it is. The Way You Make Me Feel, something like that. Um, I heard it's good. I haven't listened to it yet. Shaw Blades. Um, Jack Blades, one of my favorite songwriters of all time. Just love Jack Blades. Uh, speaking of which, real quickly, you know, Facebook is a good and bad thing. One of the times it's a bad thing is when you learn things about your heroes that you just don't want to know. Jack Blades, Jude Cole, break my heart with the stuff that they believe. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's terrible to say, but it hurts. Uh, anyway, um, sorry, I got on a tangent. Uh, this is good. This is. I was disappointed when I first got it. I remember because I was expecting uh, Damn Yankees, and it's just all stripped back, and I just wasn't in the headspace for it yet. I was just too young to appreciate it. But over the years, I really do love this. Down that highway, Blue Continental, I stumble in. Don't talk to me anymore. All great, great stuff. Really good stuff. Uh, love that. I don't have their follow-up that um what was it called inspiration i think record just because again it's cover songs and i get nothing out of cover songs uh, all right shadaisy all right speaking of uh what shania twain helped launch shadaisy i love shadaisy uh their first record came out here i heard the song little goodbyes whenever i was staying at um the Car caribbean beach resort when i won a trip to disney world as employee of the year at Canon Copiers at the building I worked at when I was in my early 20s. It was the first time I'd ever been to Disney World and what I thought was going to be the last time I was ever going to be at Disney World. That's another story. But Disney owns Lyric Street Records, which put out this um, Lyric Street Records. That's why their their picture used to be on the uh, inside of um, the Aerosmith roller coaster. Um, produced by Dan Huff once again. And Little Goodbyes was such a great song that I went home – and I bought this record, and I love it. It's so good, so full of harmonies, so immaculately produced by Dan Hoff, and just so hooky. And once again, this record is standing on the shoulders of this record and that record. But it's beautiful, beautiful stuff. Three Sisters, really good stuff. That was good. And then the follow-up was really beautiful. Also love that. This one is really good. The best one to me was the third one, Sweet Right Here, beautiful. And then their fourth one, I don't know what the hell happened. Actually, I do know what happened. Dan Huff produced all three of these, and then he did not produce their fourth one, and this one was not good, man. Didn't like this hardly at all. A couple of good songs, but not too many. But this stuff, if you like the Schneider Twain stuff, you like Rascal Flats. If you love Rascal Flats, this is the female Rascal Flats. Great, great stuff. Love these records. So happy and 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 uh, just catchy. All right, Shooting Star. I have this album because once again, Kevin Chalfont is on here. I have not listened to it yet. I will. Loud and Clear by Signal. Beautiful album. Uh, the great Mark Free, now Marcy Free, is on here. Um, does it feel like love? Arms of a stranger, wake up, you little fool. Could this be love? Such great stuff on here. If you got Unruly Child's um, self-titled record, you should get this. It's really good stuff. Very polished, very beautiful. Um, Simon and Garfunkel. I mean, I can't say anything about Simon and Garfunkel you don't know, other than I only have these two records, and I'll get more someday. Sorry. Civil Minds, this was at a, uh, a uh, Salvation Army for a dollar, so I bought it. Haven't listened to it. The Simpsons, don't know when I got it, but I got it. There it is, The Simpsons record. Skid Row, 
Oh, God. This record came out when I was, in, I think, junior high. I love this album. I listened to Youth Gone Wild so many times. Jesus, I love it. I mean, Smash and Box sings like nobody else, man. Great stuff but not good as this uh a friend uh bass player i was in a band and uh tom turns me on this record he let me borrow his copy in high school and this is a phenomenal album one of my favorite albums of all time just great really aggressive rock just such a good record love it Lo can't say enough about this one of my favorite albums ever i mean everybody on all cylinders beautiful songwriting beautiful Beautifully, not beautiful, just like great songwriting, great recording. Everybody's just, oh my God. This is one of my favorite hard rock albums of all time. I heard, and I don't have anything else by Skid Row. I heard a little bit of Subhuman Race and I didn't like it because I wanted this. I understand it was 1994 or 5, but I didn't get anything after this. Um, but Jesus, I love this album. Um, Slaughter, I bought, we're at Slaughter now. I got these two because, again, I was at the time... Again, into the soft rock, Fly to the Angels is why I bought this. Um, I know a lot of people love Slaughter. I don't hate Slaughter, but I could I could take or leave Slaughter, honestly. Up All Night's cool. Uh, Fly to the Angels is cool. You Are the One is cool, but it's really just a ripoff of You Are the Sunshine by Lionel Richie. It's just like it. You are the one, the one I need. You are the sun. You are the... Except Lionel Richie's song is better. Ooh, my phone is dying. Um, and I just am not a fan of Mark Slaughter's voice. I just don't like that whiny kind of singing. I didn't get much out of it. I bought the follow-up, and then I just stopped. Sorry. Didn't get anything after that. And then we end huh, with the Sleepless in Seattle soundtrack, which I don't even know. I think this was, again, a dollar at a Salvation Army, and I just love that movie when I went and saw it when I was a kid. And uh, I remember the soundtrack, which is very tasteful and beautiful. So we end with the Sleepless in Seattle soundtrack. All right. There we go. Uh, my phone's about to die. I talked way too much. Um, I would suggest you pick up some Shadezy stuff. It's beautiful. Um, the Signal, if you like the um, the polished kind of rock. Um, Romeo's Daughter was good. Uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, it's a mess now. I'm going to go try to find my police record that's missing. That really irritates me. Uh, again, here we go. Here's my quick uh, plug. There's my website. There's my album. I worked really hard on that record. Um, I'm really, really proud of it. So if you were, if you even smiled once during this and were like, oh, what a nerd this guy is, just um, there's a listening sampler online. Go take a listen. You know, I mean, it's hard. There's 7 billion people in the world. You think I could reach 1,000 of them, you know, maybe? All right, back to Radio Silence. Thank you all for watching. Any questions, let me know. And I'll be back with round eight someday. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching.